Hey guys, I just wanted to make a little bit of an update video. This is my third day uh, living in antics. I haven't really had a lot of free time to really play around with antics and, you know, get the, uh, get the feel of antics. But I will say so far, my experience has been pretty enjoyable. Now, when I originally installed antics, I told you guys I would probably live in one of their default window managers. Because, you know, I, I really wanted to live in Antics as the developers intended it. You know, using Joe's Window Manager or Ice WM or Fluxbox or Urbsluf WM. But in the end, what I ended up doing was I ended up installing Openbox, uh, at least for now. Because Openbox, I've already got all my config files for Openbox set up exactly the way I like it. And because I've needed to make a, a couple of videos in the last couple of days. Now, it was a lot easier just to get open box an open box session up and running and uh, doing exactly what I wanted. I really, really wanted to try to configure Joe's window manager to basically mimic the way open box works for me, but I don't think I can. I don't think I'm going to be able to use Joe's window manager because there's some functionality that's missing in Joe's window manager that I really need that I like. Uh, in open box and in other floating window managers for one thing in Joe's window manager I mentioned you can't really set any mouse bindings the way you can in open box and open box for example I uh, let me open up I'll open up the file manager here this is PC man FM I installed PC man FM on this antics does not come with PC man FM but I've got the middle click the scroll wheel on the mouse binded to close windows when I click the taskbar down here so if I middle click on the file manager here it kills it I can't do any kind of mouse bindings in JWM uh, basically however the mouse bindings are set out of the box that's all you get you can't edit them, edit them in any way that's kind of a big deal for me but I could probably get by with that but the other thing that really annoys me is window decorations. I can't undecorate windows when I need to. For example, right now I'm running GUVC view. This is my webcam uh, program here. If I right click on the title bar here in open box or in a lot of other window managers too, KDE even has this, you can choose undecorate and the frame and the title bar, all the window decorations just go away. You're left with nothing but the program. No decorations of any kind. That's really nice, especially for what I do. You guys know I review a lot of Linux distros in virtual machines. And to be able to undecorate that virtual machine and get rid of the title bar at the top of the window and the frame and the border and all that is really nice because now I'm just recording the virtual machine. You're not getting any extra stuff. Uh, you know, the window decorations and stuff on my host machine, you know, in the video that doesn't need to be there. It's just a distraction. So I can do that in OpenBox and a lot of other window managers. I can't do that in JWM. That's kind of a deal breaker. So I installed OpenBox and uh, just pulled down all my config files from GitHub. You know, I, I have a GitHub repo that I put all my config files on. So this is pretty much OpenBox as it was on Manjaro that I had on this machine before. It's also basically open box as it was before Manjaro had uh, the Ubuntu LTS on this machine and then Debian before that. The great thing with these minimal window managers, once you get them configured, if you save your config files and upload them to a, a repo like GitHub, it doesn't matter when you distro hop. Uh, I, this is pretty much open box as it was before on Manjaro that I was running. So everything looks, feels, functions exactly as it did before. Now, again, I want to live in some of the other uh, Antics window managers. Probably not Joe's window manager. I might do IceWM. I might see if that would work for me for a little while. But I've got my open box session. Uh, like I mentioned, I installed PC Man FM for a file manager just because I like PC Man FM. I'm comfortable with it. Space FM and the Rocks Filer, I don't know anything about. I probably will play around with them. May even make some videos about those particular uh, file managers, but for now I've got PC Man FM. Um, the other thing I didn't like was the default terminal application was uh, LX Terminal. 
LX terminal's a fine terminal. It's not bad, but all my shell scripts and pipe menus and stuff in OpenBox, the terminal that those scripts try to call is a terminal emulator called Termite. Now that is a problem in Antics and Debian in general, Debian and all Debian-based distros. Termite is not in Debian's repos. Despite the fact that Termite is a pretty popular program, Termite is not in the repos. So you have to build Termite yourself. Let me show you how I did that. Alright, so what I did is I went to GitHub and I found this script at uh, github.com slash corewind slash termite dash install. So termite dash install, what it is is a shell script that takes care of uh, pulling in all the dependencies you need to build termite and install termite on Debian. Because I'm telling you, installing termite on Debian is not an easy task. This shell script here makes it a lot easier. So you guys that are running Debian, Antics, other Debian-based distros like Ubuntu and whatnot, if you want the termite terminal emulator, find Corwin slash termite dash install, and that's going to help you out. The other thing I needed to put on Antics that wasn't installed by default is the Ubuntu font family. The Ubuntu font family is a free and open source font family, much like Deja Vu and Liberation and those other free font families. But the problem with the Ubuntu font family, unlike those other free and open source font families that I mentioned, the Ubuntu font family for some reason is not in the Debian repos. But that's not a that's not a huge issue. What you need to do is go to design.ubuntu.com slash font. And that is the Ubuntu font homepage here. And go to the bottom of the page, click download the Ubuntu font family, and that will download a zip file. Uh, extract that zip file, put those fonts in your slash user slash share slash fonts folder. Uh, in the true type folder. And then update your FC cache. And you will now have the Ubuntu fonts, in particular the Ubuntu monospace font is what I really wanted. Because the Ubuntu monospace font for a terminal font or for a plain text editor, it's really easy on the eyes. Uh, you know, I, I like the Ubuntu monospace font a lot. And then finally, uh, an Antics specific problem that I needed to take care of was the login manager, Slim. I don't like Slim. The Slim Login Manager is horrible. The fact that you have to press F11 to uh, cycle through your sessions. And the fact that it always asks for a username. Uh, no other Login Manager requires you to type your username. Usually, usually they assume what your username is, especially if you only have one user on a computer. They don't ask you what your username is. When you get to your Login Manager, you type a password, hit enter, and go. Not in Slim. You always have to enter your username first and then your password. That is tedious, especially if you're constantly logging in and out. Like I do a lot of uh, tweaking and configging on some of these minimal window managers. So I, you know, tweak something in a config file. I log out, log back in. If I'm constantly having to type in my username and password, that's a pain. Uh, also, if you accidentally don't type the right username or password, uh, sometimes when you do type the correct username and password the second time, it logs you into the wrong session. The window manager you were trying to log into is not the one you end up in. So I don't like Slim. It's a, it's a dead project, too. The last release of it was way back in 2013. Nobody is maintaining it. Nobody's developing it. So what I did is sudo apt install lightdm. Uh, lightdm not a lot of dependencies and it's in the Debian repos and it just works so sudo apt install light DM the light DM uh, GTK greeter settings too I went ahead and installed that and I'm using light DM for my login manager I, I went ahead and sudo apt purge slim and just got slim off this system I don't want to see slim ever again uh, getting some of the other non free software I need on the system that I use because of this channel I use uh, Dropbox sometimes. Uh, I've, I've used Dropbox for years. Uh, Dropbox has a .deb file. Go to dropbox.com and it's easy. Just grab the .deb, install it with gdeb or use the uh, terminal and do a dpkg. Uh, same thing with Discord. I installed Discord. Discord has a, has a .deb file. Uh, 
you can also do flat packs, I think, with Discord. I think Discord is on flat pack on the flathub.com. So, uh, Zoom. I also installed zoom.us because that is the app that the Big Daddy Linux podcast uses. That's what I, I have to, uh, have to, to do that sometimes. So the Zoom app also had a .deb file. You go to zoom.us, pull down the Debian file for it. So uh, there's a ton of non-free software that is packaged for Debian. That's, that's the great thing about Debian being that Debian is such a popular distro and that Ubuntu, which is based on Debian, is a massively popular distro. Most people are packaging .deb files for their programs. Um, my audio player of choice, you guys know I like Dead Beef. Dead Beef is a fantastic music player. Uh, I couldn't find any kind of deb file for Dead Beef. I had to build Dead Beef from source. Uh, it wasn't hard at all. It was actually pretty straightforward and easy. But you guys that like the uh, Dead Beef music player like I do, uh, you, you're going to have to build it from source if you're in Debian or Debian-based distros, unfortunately. So that's my experience with antics after three days again i haven't done much with it i really haven't had time to play much with antics i really haven't had time much to take a look at the antics uh, community the forums irc chat you know because i really want to see what kind of activity is going on you know whether the community is active whether the community is helpful you know it was one of the things that impressed me about the manjaro community when i ran manjaro for a couple of months the manjaro forums a lot was going on. Everybody was friendly. Everybody was trying to help each other. So, but anyway, antics after three days. I'm liking it so far. Take care, guys. Peace.